The new racing score has been out for a week now and there has been ton of discussions online whether it is fair and whether it is truly an improvement over the old categorization system. In this video I would like to clear some misconceptions, clarify how it works and share my first impressions of it. The first and probably the biggest issue people have with the new racing score is they really cannot compete in their old categories anymore. But you need to realize one thing, they are no longer your old categories. They are now five categories instead of four in the previous system, which means that the average skill level of riders in each category has shifted up. The first category now connects riders who were mid to high A category before, the second has both low A riders and higher ranked B riders and so on. So if you were competing in the middle of category under the old system, chances are you are now at the bottom of said category. That's actually what happened to me. I was a mid B rider under the old system and now I'm at the very bottom of the second category. So don't try to compare the two, they are really not comparable. The second problem I've seen a lot of people mention lately is connected to the first one and it is that they are getting consistently dropped in their new groups. And I'm sort of afraid that there is this false perception that under a fair categorization system you should be able to compete at all times. But that's really not possible. The skill range on Hall Zwift is just too great and we have only five categories to contain that skill range. Sure, we could have 10 categories for racing, but then the races would be probably pretty empty. The goal of a fair ranking system isn't to create an environment in which you don't get dropped or lose anymore. It is to create an environment in which it doesn't happen by the hands of riders that are head and shoulders above you. Sometimes the path forward isn't tied to categorization, sometimes it is tied to better nutrition, higher training load or better workouts. Another misconception lie around the initial seeding system. Firstly, people tend to really overemphasize its importance. And by the way, I fully agree. In addition to the 30 seconds max power and 10 minute max power, Zwift should also look into 5 minute max power of riders. But at the end of the day, it is just that, a seeding system, a starting point. After few races, it won't matter anymore because everyone's true racing score will move to their actual level, whether it is up or down. Of course, it is possible that if a rider doesn't have enough max effort data on their account, they might get seeded into a category that is well below their abilities. But after a few races in which they presumably will do very well, they should get bumped up and it shouldn't be a problem anymore. And actually in the Zwift Insider uh, deep dive, Eric mentioned that Zwift is looking into ways to combat this. And it should work like that, that if the rider doesn't have enough data points in their 90 day period window, the program should look into their one year history. So that should solve the issue. And the last significant concern I read about is that under the current system, people can deliberately tank their own score in order to be able to race in a lower group. And I think it is a perfectly valid concern. Uh, I would mainly say it applies to people who are close to the lower group. I really cannot imagine someone who is high in the group or even in the middle of the group consistently losing races on purpose just to be able to race in a lower category for a race or two before they get bumped up again. That would be incredibly boring. But it is something that is abusable and something that Zwift should pay attention to. And actually in the deep dive article on Zwift Insider, by the way, I will link it down below, uh, it is mentioned that Zwift is exploring the possibility uh, of ignoring race results or race efforts in which they detect that the person didn't really try to compete. Uh, it sounds good, but my concern is how is Zwift going to decide whether my bad effort was due to me really not trying and slacking or if I just had a bad day. But that is something that's probably going to happen in the future. So what are my first impressions of this new racing score system? 
I'm actually really excited about it, even though there are some early pains connected to it. Uh, for me, it solves my main two concerns I've had with the previous system. The first was sandbagging. Obviously, the people who knew how the system worked could very well control it and basically stay in a lower category for indefinite amount of time and abuse the people racing there. And second, uh, if you were promoted because of your good effort, you were basically locked into the higher category for three months, even though you might get sick, even though you might get injured or detrain, there wasn't a way for you to get down apart from that good effort uh, basically fading out of your history. And now that's solved, obviously, if you race poorly, your racing score will go down. So this new system should really solve both these my concerns and I'm really happy about it, even though it means that I'm currently scraping the bottom of the barrel of B category. See you next time.